Um, all right, so it's called Mars in Scorpio. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's not what it sounds like. <laughs> um, okay, one. I had neglected to remember him by the time I moved to Canada. He was my Baba's friend's son. We lived at the two respective neighboring ends that made up the tip of the boot snug between the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf. Our fathers, who were school friends, had recently connected over email. There were talks of family visits, but nothing came of it. It was during this time that for some reason, our fathers decided that we could also become friends. In their minds, our age was an assumed bridge. We were 14, that awkward, vulnerable period when it was, I suppose, easier to strike up a faceless conversation. We exchanged a few emails, talking mainly about books and movies. My Nancy Drews competing with his Hardy Boys, my love for horror over his sci-fi. We discovered that even though our afternoons had similar arcs, napping mothers, we spent them differently. While I chose to curl up with a book, his poison was trying to conquer a Roman settlement on his computer screen. And as enthusiastic as he had been in his extensive meditated responses, just as suddenly, he very enthusiastically stopped writing. My Mars is in Scorpio, which is perhaps why I was quick to take, take offense. I never followed up, never cared to inquire why. I imagined in the new age of internet revolution, when online dating was commonplace through ICQ, he had found someone in his zip code to keep him busy. It was only when we moved to Mississauga four years later that Baba brought up his name. Do you remember Ronnie, he said? Who? The bunker uncle's son, the one you wrote emails to, the one who lived in Muscat? The same. He stopped writing, I remember. Yes, he died. I had seen only one dead person in my short lifetime. She was my friend's grandmother, a stern woman laid out on the family bed, austere in her widow's sari. I was six then. I gaped curiously at her nostrils stuffed with cotton wool. It was later when I read that on dying, people start leaking from places. I wondered if she had been stuffed elsewhere as well. Muscle dystrophy when he was 14, Baba said, as if it was self-explanatory. His family is in the saga now. Two, muscular dystrophy is a genetic disorder that gradually weakens the body's muscles. It is caused by incorrect or missing genetic information that prevents the body from making the proteins needed to build and maintain healthy muscles. A child who's diagnosed with muscle dystrophy gradually loses the ability to do things like walk, sit upright, breathe easily, and move the arms and hands. This increasing weakness can lead to other health problems. There is no cure for muscle dystrophy. Three, our families met often, making road trips both short and long. I vaguely tolerated their daughter, Rani, a girl much younger in age, and her inane cravings for McDonald's on these trips. We never talked of Ronnie, but he was always there. The silent ghost hanging out with us in the living room, on the beach at Wasaga, breathing out into the January cold in New York, making a face when Rani whined for junk food, or just staring through the windows when our cars passed each other. I hated these outings as much as I had hated Ronnie's silence all those years ago. Four, his family moved to Mumbai before the summer of our second year. They had tried, they said, but in the end, it was the cold that drove them out. Thank you. <laughs>